Hey guys, it's time for a brew day. I called out of work. I needed a mental health day. I needed a brew day to actually set myself straight. And uh, so I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to make several videos from this one brew day so that you don't have to sit through a whole brew day, you know, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes of me making a beer and then waiting to see where it is. So I'm going to split these all up. So start off first, set up the water, do what I have to do. I have a whole house filter, two cartridge from uh, filters one, two, three. That then filters my whole house water. I used to fill up from the spigot directly from there, but now I have a slop sink with a hose barb on the end. And I connected to a 10 inch charcoal filter to get rid of any type of chlorine or off taste. So I fill up my Robo Brew with a desired amount of mash and sparge water. And the way I do that is I go onto greenfather.com and there is a mash sparge water calculator. Robo Brewer was pretty much a knockoff of the Greenfather. So when I put in my green bill of 13 and a half pounds, I want six and a half gallons of water in the boil in the kettle to boil down to five and a half due to the large amount of hops in this Deschutes uh, IPA clone that I'm making from Midwest called uh, Fresh Squeezed and I think it's called Half Squeezed in, uh, or Full Squeezed from Deschutes. Um, so that way I don't leave a lot of, I'm going to be leaving a lot of the, the hops and the trube and everything else behind in the kettle so that way I can at least have maybe about um, five gallons, five and a half gallons in my fermenter. So the app, the website told me to use five and point three gallons of strike water, mash water, and 3.56 of sparge water. So I filled it all the way up to the top. So there's actually two rims. There's this rim, which is an inset that the pipe, the mash pipe, sits on with its little feet, okay? And then there's the top rim. That's where the water would overflow. I filled up to right here. This holds nine gallons exactly to the tippy top. I did eight and a half. So just remember, water expands when it gets hot and water condenses when it gets cold. So at room temperature or even 50 degrees, it was right here. At 170, when I opened it up, it was up here. It was almost overflowing. So that's a little tip for you guys with the Robert Brew or Grandfather. If you fill up to the tippy, tippy top to heat up everything, don't go to the top. Go a half inch below. That'll give you enough space for the water to expand and not overflow, okay? I then drained my strike water, no, my uh, sparge water into a five gallon cooler and that's gonna sit there at 170 degrees until my mash is done and I need to sparge. Okay, hope that helps. That's how I get my volume. Grainfather.com, put in your grain bill, how much you want in the boil kettle, and what type of system you have. This is a 10, uh, 110 volt AC. It doesn't boil as vigorously as the 220, so it doesn't need more water because it would boil off. So I thank goodness I didn't have to go any higher in the water. I would have to do a cold sparge. So that's that. See you at the next video.